morning. Hey, everybody. I was getting a little nervous that I wasn't seeing anybody here, but I see you, Miss Brenda. Good morning. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. This, I just got to turn the news off, right? So a uh, couple things that are kind of fun and interesting, or maybe not, but uh, today we will be working on basket G, which is right here. But before we get to that, uh, let me tell you, I went and saw my mom this weekend. And, when, and, and whenever I see her, I try and bring something that we can talk about or that we can relate to or something like that. So I brought two of the blocks here that, you know, we're working on, the first couple blocks. And I pointed out the little birdie fabric, which in this fabric bunch, I just adore this birdie fabric. I went to see if we had more out at work that was like on the cutting room floor and we don't because I want more of that. Oh, by the way, we still do have kits available or bundles of Editus fabric. It, let me grab it. It really is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There's so many pieces I would want in here just for my collection anyways, starting with that bird fabric. But anyways, I, I put it on her lap. She The other day, you know, she was chatty Cathy. I don't know where that came from. And then the next time I saw her, there was nothing. And this time she couldn't really figure out who I was because, you know, I am all geared up and all that. But I put these on her lap and she's looking at them, just kind of looking at them and touching them. And she says, now she's not a quilter, you guys. She said, I, I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't understand, you know, don't understand. And, so, and then she said, what, what good is this? You need four. <laughs> and then I tried to show her a picture of the quilt on my phone and she looked at it and then she goes, you know, and half the time she can't hear. And then she goes, my mind, I'm tangled. My mind is tangled up. And I thought that was so interesting because it's like, what is going on in there? And I thought, wow, that really says it all. My mind is tangled up. So I'm going to have to take her the quilt top next time. I find that when I can sit outside with her and hold her hand or that sort of thing, it's a much better experience for both of us. So also this weekend, it's in between Adair's two kids' birthday. And she had a great idea for their present. So this is what she redid their room. Let me start with that. Okay, first baby, precious, you know, the mobile. I, I pride myself in making really good mobiles. And this is Lennox and the bird wallpaper that I just adore. Okay, so then uh, uh, along comes William. And these two kids are so connected. They're like two years apart. And even though they're a boy and a girl, they are connected. And so at one point, I don't even know what possessed Adair to do this, but it was like, do you want to, do you guys want to move in the same room? And they were like, yes. And Adair. <laughs> Um, Adair was, mute that thing. Adair said, okay, so she brought his crib in and she was in her big girl bed and he was just crying because he thought by, he could be in the same bed with her. So, so then they, you know, they kind of got things sorted out and half of the room was little girly on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, uh, his room originally was nautical. So you had pink and you had blue and all that. And so Adair said for their birthday, she's going to redo their room. And I thought what she came up with was so clever that I wanted to share it with you. He is into dinosaurs and she's into mermaids and kitties. And this is in the, in the transition while she and her girlfriend were working on it. But she ended up with mermaid sheets and roses. And then he ended up with jungle leaves and dinosaur stuff. So Wendy, my friend, and perhaps you've, she's been on the show a couple times. 
Adair wanted me to make a duvet, and I don't know how to do buttonholes, if you can believe it. At least that's what I tell everybody. And Wendy, I'm sorry the picture isn't better, but the light was shining in. You can see that is a Spinosaurus. And Wendy used, the, his nose is coming down to the bottom left-hand corner. So that is his duvet. The kids came home and they could not believe it. Before they left with their dad to go away for a weekend, they put up a kind of a caution sign outside the door and work in progress because they were more worried about William not being able to transition it comfortably. <laughs> and Lennox saw it and started sobbing going, there's people in my room. So it was, it was a rough weekend <laughs> for Jerry. So anyhow, the room is done. It's adorable. And you guys continue to post pictures on the forum, which makes me very happy or get them into my hands one way or another. This is Dottie's and we have a few Sequoia. There we go. Yeah, we're back on now. Guys, we've been having some really bad internet issues uh, today. So yeah, um, it was interrupted. I hope we can get through today's lesson, but this morning we were having issues. So are we all looking right now at Dottie's Sequoia quilt that's got the teal in it and all that good stuff? Is that what you can see, John? He's my eyes in the other room. Let's see, it looks like we're still on. Okay, so Sue, here we go. Let's take a look at, is it going now in your room? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it stopped. I think it has to do with whatever the heck's going on with our internet here this morning. So, okay, so sorry about that, guys. In fact, Lennox was here to do her remote learning and she couldn't do it, but the neighbors all had it. I guess we have to pay our bill. I, maybe that makes a difference. <laughs> So this is Alice's and Alice put a house in it and she, I can't remember, there's a reason you put red in the window. I'm sorry, Alice, but it was very symbolic of this whole thing. And then there's little shoes right outside her house because they take their shoes off before they go in their house. And I think the red had to do with the virus. I'm sorry, I my brain, too much has happened already today, <laughs> you know? Okay, so this is Cray Crafter. Look at that. Man, that white outside border is just something else. Oh, okay, okay. Let me go back to Alice. Thank you. I think it was Alice that put it. There's red in the window because they just gotten back from evacuation from the fires. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I knew it was something very unusual. I'm glad you're home safe and sound. I'm glad you have a home that you could come to. It is just wicked wild here in California. Okay, so now we're back to Cray Crafter. And uh, I think this is just beautiful. Again, that border is so dynamic. And you know what's interesting is I think typically a border like that could almost become too strong. And it's not, it's just great. Okay, and then um, this is a Judy Mullen basket that either she sent me, I, I got it a long time ago and I stumbled on it again this morning. I wanted to show you, look at this basket quilt, you guys. If this doesn't sell the deal, I don't know what. Now note that these are different baskets than what we're doing, but what we're really, well, some are the same, some are not, but really it shows what how the more, the interesting ways you can set these things. Next week, we are going to learn how to do handles. I have a real snazzy way to do that. So I'm very, very excited. When it gets, this is, again, a basket puzzle because she put it together just as if you would do a jigsaw puzzle. And it looks to me that she stuck with six inch and 12 inch blocks. I could be wrong. I'm just taking a cursory look here, but that outside border is just pretty fabulous too. Don't you think? So is anybody else having, getting photos posted to the forum? Cannot get mine to post. You know what? Um, go to the forum and I'm hoping Barbara Black's here and perhaps she can get on there and tutorial you to do it. I am, I am not the person to ask that question, but maybe other people are having issues too. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing today. Oh, they're four and eight inches, Margot said. Thank you, Margot. 
You guys, I've got good keepers here. What can I say? And I was wondering if you're the one that sent it to me, Margo. Anyways, this is what we're using for our uh, baskets, and it's what we used for our cave. And it's available digitally, as well as I think we have some new books in the office. And what we're going to do is basket G, number 14, on page 26. Okay? So what I thought this today's we will concentrate on is pinning and pressing. Now this is all, again, half square triangles, just how we've been doing all along. And I did get an email saying that, th that this person has nailed it, getting it right, not even having to size up. And I think a lot of that has to do with your accurate cutting, it has to do with thread that is super thin. It's one of the reasons I just keep shouting out my fine thread for 80 weight bobbin. It's Quilter Select. You can get it at the quilt show. But I'm going to hold this up here. Okay. Now, what we're going to do, let me. Oh, man. John, thank you for getting me this toy. Okay. These are just all half square triangles like we've been doing, right? not that different but what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to piece this together and then what to do if you have a trillion seams coming together okay because you'll get lumpy bumpies on wednesday i'm going to show you how to do this flying geese method and honest so that there's not a seam here but the lesson that i thought this posed was how to press seams when all right so I pieced this together last night when I was with my girlfriends on our Sunday meeting. Oh, somebody asked about that. We have a Zoom meeting with two of my girlfriends that normally we go away and sew. And you can work on whatever you want. And we it's just as if we are sitting in a room together sewing. You know, sometimes there's quiet. Sometimes there's chit-chat and all that. All right. So when I first made this, these two blocks... I automatically pressed to the dark just because I did, you know? But then I realized, let me flip this over. How do I do this? That if I, we're talking about right here now, if I pressed to the dark, I was going to have a bunch of seams bunching up like this. So I went back and took advantage of pressing this one, oh, I'm sorry, this one to dark and this one to light. And then that way they could nest into each other. Sometimes you get in trouble and they are all going in the same direction and there's nothing you can do about it. But in this case, there was something I could do about it because nothing really had been sewn together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I get this right. So easy to get this screwed up as you're watching right now. <laughs> so right now, I'm going to nestle these two seams together. Okay, I'm just sewing on the light. I mean, how many times have you guys, you know, get it all nestled up and then you sew the wrong, wrong seam? Okay, I can see that's going straight across. I'm going to drop a pin in a sixteenth of an inch before and a sixteenth of an inch after. And then I am going to sew from here to here. All right, I'll be right back. You don't need to see this pinning. I'm trying to not, I'm trying to not have to move the secondary camera as much as possible. So now what you do is you come back here and you say a prayer, right? Let's see if it lined up. Yes, yes. I'm going to press this in this direction, I think. Let me just put that there. Let me do this one too. We're going to partially build this block, all right? So again, I know this is the seam I'm going to sew. I would prefer to lead in with the pointies at the top so that there's less chance of um, it shifting. But note that I still in my brain, I'm sewing on this on the light, this light side here. And I might even drop a little dab of glue right in here. 
By the way, we watched Ricky and Kat's show this weekend, and jo and one of the segments, is, Ricky talks about magic numbers and all that good stuff, and John goes, I understand them now. So yay, I know it takes a while to sink in, but he got it, so that made me very happy. Okay, it's looking good. So let's put that there. Now I have to sew, I'm gonna sew this to this. All right? Yeah, I don't think you need to see that. So when we're done today, we're jamming out to the new offices and we're going to be signing the lease. And it makes me happy and sad all in one shot. Okay, so what's gonna happen now? up here and we'll get into pressing in a minute here I've got to sew this to this and then this to this so this is gets down to when weirdo shapes don't line up and I think in the book they've got that in the back I think they do yes on page 124 they have when weirdo shapes don't line up and in this case we're doing this one you keep this straight across and you have this little bunny up here. Super, super good um, resource. So I'm gonna bring this down here. I am going to now go sew and then we'll get into some more pressing 101. All right, here's this. I'm going to press this in this direction so that on the back side I can see the X up here. Well, let me see if this will bring it in. I'll tell you what you can see. You can see I need to paint my nails. Yeah, there you can see the little X right there. So that tells me exactly where to sew. So let me get back down here, which now, of course, it's going to go blurry. Um, so how I'm going to pick, how I'm going to press is I'm, this is an exposed bias right here. I'm on my firm little mat. And you know what? My Panasonic did bite the dust. I got to get a new one. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to come off. I'm going to completely stay away from that. All right. Then I'm going to sew this one to this one. I'm going to go over here to my machine and drop a little bit of glue in. If you wonder what I'm talking about, it's this. Take a little bit of glue stick. I discovered that last round and it's changed my life. I haven't done this much piecing in the last 10 years. And wait till you see what's coming up next. You'll just die. Okay, so again, I'm going to press this way, and I'm going to come up and off. My fear is that this is going to tip over here. You, 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 I got a three-ring circus. Okay, so I'm going to go up and off. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is before I sew on these guys, I'm going to sew this on to here. I for sure will drop glue in here because this is a really wicked sharp shape. Glue. Glue. And remember, keep that glue within the seam allowance. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to sew from this side. Let's try again. Because I can see that I'm going to sew one hair to the raw edge. Not this side, this side. All right, so I'll be back in a sec. I don't mind if the little thing is floating. I mind if it's cut off. That's my goal, is to not cut it off. Oh, good. 
Okay. So now the good news is, is all the biases have been sewn up. So I can be very aggressive in my pressing. And this naturally wants, this, ah, this naturally, ah, this naturally wants to go this way because of this intersection. So I'm letting the fabric be my guide. I can be very aggressive. I could even use steam right now if I wanted. All right. So now let's go back to business here. Okay, if this is pressed this way, oh wait, let's go down here first. If this, and it is, is pressed this way, I'm gonna press this this way. That's one reason I waited to not press. I'm also, I guess I'm gonna press first. And what I'm pressing on, and this isn't really what I'm supposed to, it's a pizza box <laughs> with a little bit of batting. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna trim off these bunny ears. I trim them off after I have successfully sewn things together. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this one's going this way, this one's going this way. I do believe, no, I'm not going to change the camera. Okay, you've seen me pin this way, where I come in the back exactly at the X. No, actually, I am going to change it, because if you haven't seen this super valuable lesson, and then I'm going to come right in here, I'm going to smash them together. And then drop a pin in 16th of an inch before and a 16th of an inch after. Get in there. And see like how it's wonky down here? Y you don't want that. You want to fix that. And yes, there will always be some discrepancies because it is fabric, but you want to get it as good as you can get it, right? You know, I did some woodworking and two things stopped me. I thought I could cut my finger off like my grandpa did, but also there's very little forgiveness in wood. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. So I'm going to put it on me, move my camera, get it down here. John decided I could put it on top of my sewing machine and you guys could see. So let's go see if that's working. Yes, it is working. So, Bring it down a little bit more. All right. I'm going to, on my Bernina, right here is the lead in for your quarter inch, but also on my Sew Steady, it comes all the way down here. So let me start here. I'm looking here and I'm looking here. I am not so much looking over here. And then I'm going to leave this pin in place. I just lifted up my presser foot because this fabric under was starting to bubble in the same direction or in the wrong direction. There, pull it out. Let's go in. Looking down here. see what happens of course I'm gonna go for a close-up and I don't even know if it works or not <laughs> let's see okay <gasps> yay okay but now we have a pressing conundrum all right so let's talk about what to do here here we go come on little guy get in focus Come on, little guy. There we go. If I press, wait a minute, this goes this way. If I press this way, I'm gonna have a big fat lump. If I press this way, I'm gonna have a big fat lump because I've got more than six seams coming together. I've got 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, when I have six or more seams coming together, I seriously consider pressing the seams open. So how I do that is I've been pounding on you to always press from the right side up, but if you're gonna press it open, I turn it upside down and I use my finger to spread things open like that. Now, the reason it's not optimum, I know a lot, excuse, blah, let me start over. A lot of the new sewers are pressing everything open. I prefer not only because um, when seams are pressed from one side to another, it's easier to align things. But in a case like that, this, I've got to say, you know, I want something really super flat and wonderful. So I'm going to press this again from this side. And then I'm going to take my old iron, my grandma's iron. Get this down here. By the way, my friend promised me she has an Aliso she's getting rid of, and do I want it? <laughs> Straight up, I do. All right, so look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So now, what I'm going to do is, this is pressed this way, so I want to press the opposite way. I will do that right now. Gosh, you guys, now I have two footstools I'm working off of here. Although, again, I, I, owe, I owe John because I love this new camera. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Let me pin it. All right. Now, okay, look at this. When it's all said and done, that's unacceptable. I've got to press it back and get it down flat. It has not been sewn that way, so I'm not going to freak out about it right now. But you really, when I first started, well, not first, maybe for the first 10, 15 years, when I would be sewing, piecing, I didn't really honor the importance of pressing. And I will tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, it can make all, it will make all the difference in the world. Okay, I've come through. I have come through. Press it down. And this is, at this point, if you have like those flower head pins, don't use them because you, they'll wobble too much when you're pressing down. Then I'm going to open it up. You, This is a piece line here and it's going straight across here. So I got a 50% chance of getting it right now. Okay, so now because I have pressed this seam open, it is not going to nest one way or another, like how it did down here. So what I do is if I'm having to deal with seams that are open, I, I use the peaky method. I go like this, I line it up, again, 16th of an inch before, a 16th of an inch after. Take a little looky-see. Yeah, that looks pretty darn good. Long time ago, I had a fancy seam ripper around my neck and someone said, what's that? And I go, oh, it's a seam ripper. And they said, but you're supposed to be the expert. And I said, yes, and that's why I have a seam ripper. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's, it's John that said, change the camera back to you. And then move this so I don't get you seasick. All right. And here we go. Very slowly. Don't sew over pins. Do as I say, not what I do. Okay, see how it's starting to roll right there on the left-hand side right there? I'm going to lift it up. Pull out that pin right when I get to that hole. Whenever I say, say a little prayer, I think of that song. Say a little prayer for you. All right. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's go back and press. I'm happy. Today might be the day to buy a lottery ticket. John's bringing in questions. Get over here. Source or camera. Oh, wait. Sorry. All right. So let's take care of that little thing right there because that's bad. And it, oh, look at here. That's bad too. And then again, I'm going to press, I'm, I'm going to press it open because of all that's going on right here. There are like sewing hams and things like that you can use. Okay, if you've glued, glued it, you might have to pick at it a little bit to open it up to help open the seams up. I might even have someone, one somewhere, but because I've got my little fake fingernails, I can use that just fine. Open up my little fingernails. In fact, they're really short right now. In the olden days, they were like daggers. Okay, and then here, it's really, even though I pressed open, it's not a super fabulous press. So I'm gonna do it again. Set it. And there you go. So then what you would do, and I'm not going to do this right now, I would sew this to this, lining up the outside edge. Don't forget that wonderful page in the book. Then this to this here, and then this guy will just fit right on. And oh my gosh, that's a cute block. Okay, so John brought me some questions. Sneaks in here like a church mouse. Oh, how many of each block do you make? Guys, on my Facebook, I have a picture of this. Make what you want. This is a wall size hanging. It's a puzzle. I mean, I can sit there and go do this, 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 and this. But as you make some of these blocks, you're going to fall in love with some blocks more than the other. And then you might want to make more. And this is the importance of also having a design wall. So you can put it up and then say, oh, well, I'll do one with a dark background there. Or I'll do one with a light background there or something like that. As long as you're working in two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. It will go together. It is a jigsaw puzzle. One person uses a rubber mallet. Pound, pound press. You know how else does that is, um, I think Susan Cleveland does too. <laughs> I think I've seen that on our show. How many of each blocks? Oh, do you ever press seams open? Um, name of the good pins that I use. I use, uh, Clover has really nice ones. Don't get the extra long ones. Honestly, I don't know what's in our store, but if it's in our store, they're good ones. Just get the regular length, extra fine glass head silk pins. And there's many, there's a variety out there. Um, Bowen has them. Um, they're the ones that make you cringe when you get out your wallet. Okay, I think that is good. So let me tell you what we're gonna do this week. Because I just want you to make blocks. Uh, on Wednesday, we are going to do... John's going to be so excited I've got this together. I'm usually like, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I know. We're going to do basket D, which is a lot like what we've just done here, except this part isn't pieced. And the center is way less busy. All right? So that's what we're going to do on Wednesday. Then on Friday, do you use your random leftover half square triangles for fill in? You maybe could as long as they finish at two inches. So I don't throw anything away until the project's done. Okay, so, and then I might even save it. I bound my quilt. I'm so excited. It's done. Woohoo! All right, so then I'll tell you what we're gonna do on Friday when I show you. I'm so happy, I can't stand it. I did straight line quilting in the middle, and then on the edge, I kind of like did a triangle snail, all right, on the color ones, and then I did echo quilting on the, uh, in the white. Super fun, I did it on my Q20, and I did it with my ruler, and by the time I was done, I was pretty darn happy with the results. The good news is, is that I've told you before that if you 
sometimes if you um, do it on the diagonal, quilt on the diagonal, put this up here, um, hold on. If you sew on the diagonal quilt, it can get stretched out. But what I did was, before I did any sewing at all, I went and I anchored this all down. Then I went in and I did all this, and then I did this. Now it is a little ripply, not bad, nothing that I can't block out. And then I thought, okay, guess what I'm gonna do on Friday? I'm gonna block the quilt for you. I'm gonna wash it up before, pray nothing runs. If it does run, I'll fix it and I'll tell you how. And then I'm gonna go into my living room and I will show you how I block my quilt. And one of the things I just ordered for that were T-pins. So I'm going to be getting a bunch of T-pins um, from Amazon on Thursday so I can do this. So, uh, Janet, what pattern is this? It was our Kaif mystery quilt that we did before our basket puzzle. And it's all right there on the main page of the quiltshow.com. And again, you do need this book. And we just went through block after block after block. And it was so much fun. And if you go to the forum, you'll just be amazed at what people did. And so the other thing I'm gonna say too, is we so appreciate when you join for $19.95 for six months. You don't have to, to get these lessons, they're free. But it does give us the ability to keep going forward in this weird COVID time. And with that, I'm gonna save this too, and I might have said it Friday, if you're in a guild, now is not the time to abandon that guild. They need you more than ever. And if you're of an older demographic, um, you can learn how to do Zoom and you're gonna be able to have people come into your sewing space from all over the world. I am teaching in a bunch of Zoom classes, or lecturing, and I'm really ever so grateful that we have this technology, just like I'm ever so grateful that we're here. I mean, this would not have been possible a while back. Just wouldn't. So thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate it. Probably a lot of you are due right now. If you missed the Ricky show and Kat, the Lizzie, we had it free all day yesterday. Uh, go check it out. He he actually uh, gave a lesson. I learned something here um, in his third demo. Uh, he used templates. He showed how to do it. And then he also talked again about sewing with young children and doing a very simple project with them. So that was pretty fun to watch. So it's not too late. Do we still have fabric left of the cave? I don't think we do. I think we're out of the baskets. Yeah, we got, I'd say we have about 50 bundles of these and we would love to not have to move them. Cat oh yeah, and then on Ricky's show, go to the after set, Cat Sings. She's good. So I guess I gotta get going because we have to go out and sign papers and write a fat check. And uh, see you Wednesday. We'll be doing that other block. And then Friday, we'll be blocking a quilt. And then next week, we'll be working on baskets with handles, which kind of are my favorite. So have a good day. Stay safe. And if you're up in the fires, we're holding a good thought for you. What a mess. And I'm so glad that you got home, that I shared your quilt and I've forgotten your name. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. All right, you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.